So what I'm saying is for as 33 AD, Christ came, when Christ was here, he only came to the sinners. As far as them getting them to repent because the righteous he didn't come talk to. And uh, I can prove that in Matthew 9 verse 13 it says, uh, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice for I am not called to the call to the righteous but sinners to repentance. So if he came to the righteous Americans that were the ancient Americans that so called died off and only one righteous person remained, why is he saying he only come to the sinners when he came in the flesh this entire time he was alive? This is in red print. So how did he come to righteous knee fights in thirty three AD if he said he called the sinners? to repentance. So the Mormons gotta help break that down. And uh we can say the witness that in uh Matthew eleven verse nineteen. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a uh, man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. So they called him a wine bibber and a gluttonous man. He always had some kind of food or drink in his hand. And they said he was a friend of publicans and sinners. When you saw him, you saw him next to sinners. He wasn't with righteous people. He wasn't always dwelling amongst the righteous. So, again, how did he all of a sudden come travel to the Americas, which wasn't called America, yet until the 1400s, going 33 AD, and say, I'm going to preach the gospel, cause so-called a famine in the land, Thousands of years and then bring it back to Joseph Smith it is not adding up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it says that their purpose is to add to your belief. Let's read and go to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 4, verses 2. Because ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So, we're not supposed to add or take from that. You can get a second witness. And also, I'll read that. Deuteronomy 12, 32. What things soever I command you, observe and to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So, that means he already gave us the commandments. He, he put it all up in here. We ain't supposed to add or take from it. We know in Revelation is what happens if you add to his word, you're going to be added to plagues that are written in this book. You take from the word, you're going to be taking your name out of the book of life. So why is Joseph Smith adding the book to the Bible? Why is there later a book of Mormons that doesn't even stand 200 years old and had to be revised f five years after it was written just to put somebody else's name as high priest and high elder when we clearly, as far as, priest is concerned, we can go to what, Hebrews 3 verses 1, and we can go to what, chapter 4, all, all Hebrews, I go 3 verse 1 as a witness, Hebrews 3 1 says, wherefore holy brother, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He's the high priest and the apostle. Joseph Smith calling himself a high priest at this point is void because this was thousands of years written ago. Why he's saying that, I don't know. Another witness you can read is Hebrews 6 20. That definitely stands out. Now, I'll just go ahead and close this up and wrap it up. Y'all can read these scripts for yourselves. But um they called him a prophet. What chops that up? Him being a prophet after John the Baptist. Christ even called him to basically the greatest prophet of all. That would be um, Luke 7, verse 28. That doesn't balance up with Joseph Smith because he came later. So, you know, later for that, how did he get involved? And in, when did Christ Jesus know anything about Joseph Smith? How come he don't mention it in the Bible? It makes no sense. But some heathen scriptures, because they you're going to receive it in round two. It said, remember the heathen. Or for people who already seen it, he said, remember the heathen. Uh, what chopped it up, David said plenty of times all through Psalms. I can give you some uh, Psalms 59 and 5, 49 and 7. Um, uh, you can go to 149 and 7, uh, Psalms 1843. Um, 
Psalms 3310. I mean, that, like I said, plenty of Psalms, but you can go to 2 Kings 17 verses 8, 2 Chronicles 33 9, uh, Ezra 621, um, also 2 Kings 21 verse 2. He chops it all up about his fault, how he feels about the heathen. So if you want to know exactly how Christ, the most high, the almighty feels about heathen, you can look up those scripts. And uh, Shalom, these are the questions you can ask these Mormons, and I doubt they'll be able to break it down. You'll eventually see they nine times ten to come to madness. If not, hey, be the first to bring them Mormons to the table because uh, I ain't got no clear answer for none of them yet. So y'all stay tuned. Shalom, most high be with all who agree.